Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 179 today and we continue our final season with a Champions League home clash against Red Bull Salzburg of Austria. An opportunity for us to try and make history. We said if we can get through in the Champions League, we want to reach the quarterfinals for the first time. And of course, winning the group gives us a better opportunity of a nicer draw. Either way, of course, it's probably going to be tough work. But the big story today is not us. It is the rest of the league. The league table tells you a story and Europe is probably going to be a slight disappointment. So if you're looking forward to finding out about that, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. I feel like maybe the season before last, Welsh football as a whole reached its peak. And now we're starting to see the decline of some of these other clubs, which really is such a shame because they could have gone on to the next level here. If you want to stay up to date for the rest of the season and find out if anyone can save the day, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. This weekend, we'll have our first FM22 themed videos. And of course, we're only a couple of weeks away from the beaten out. So please do stay up to date. I'm looking forward to it and hoping it can be a big year. Let's start though very quickly with our results because in 12 games in the league, despite drawing one, which you saw last time, we have got 34 points, an 11 point lead and a plus 41 goal difference. What's really concerning is if you look at the rest of the league, TNS, Colwyn Bay and Barrytown United are way down. Now I know they've got games in hand, but still, that's pretty appalling because they should be up there with Newtown and Carmarthen at the very least. I find it really hard that teams haven't got consistency. TNS, of course, bottled it last season. Barrytown now not able to cope with the extra competitions. It's becoming a big frustration and I'm starting to get annoyed by it, which I didn't want to at the end of this save. Let's have a look at the schedule though to see where we are. We were here last time to play Ajax in the first Champions League game. And since then, we've tightened up defensively, which is a really good sign. And we've also started to score goals galore till the last game where it dropped off a little bit. So a 5-1 win against Barla was the first one of those. Walters with two, Kian Bulkley with two and Geffen Davis with one. A red card again there helping us to get two more goals in the second period. The next game, a 3-0 League Cup win against Carnarfon. Late red cards, another goal followed it, but we were already through. Tom Jones, Hector Leon and Lloyd Gould in there. A 1-0 win against Haverford West, a Lloyd Goulding penalty doing the job, but we were a little bit depleted in that game. You see, I made no changes and played a very backup team. So I was resting the first team for the Ray Rovers game. We knew it would be a test, but we beat the test. It is the most confident we've ever looked against Ray Rovers. Kavara got a late second from the penalty spot and own goal gave us the lead. So it was by no means a big convincing win. But still, stats-wise, we dominated. We restricted Rafe to one shot on target, less than 40% of the ball, and we made them look like an amateur side, which is what we haven't done at all in this save. We followed it up with a thrashing of Swansea University, 7-0 on this occasion. Kian Bulkley with four, Bojan Kavara with two, and Kaya Bulkley with one. Kian Bulkley becoming a worry now, of course. He's got that release clause and won't sign another deal. Someone will take him for 24 million in January. I mean, look, Clubs are queuing up that want him already. Real Madrid, Newcastle, Leicester, they've all got the budget to come and get him. We've followed up with four very, very efficient defeats since, but nothing particularly crushing. So 2-0 against Cardiff Met Uni. A few players rested because of the internationals. Kavara and Tom Jones getting the goals there. A very reserved side against Elgin City in the SPFL Trust Trophy. Goulding and Danny Gomez-Garcia scored in that one. Ironically, we missed two penalties beforehand, both of the strikers missing one apiece. And loads of players were out of position here because we just ran out of squad in the internationals. The likes of Rid and Ruben Bates in the squad doing the job they were asked of. And then three youngsters from the under-18s off the bench. A few of you have mentioned in the comments about Pope looking a good young striker and loan him out. I tried all window. And because he's played a few first-team games for us, he's got this inflated reputation and maybe even ego as well that he now won't go to another club on loan. But that's a player that could help Colwyn Bay, that could probably help Barrytown United. And he's not going because he's played football for us. It's so infuriating. But he has scored a goal for us this season, and he's looked a good player. That goal came against TNS. Again, we were a little depleted. It was still at the end of the international break. But Goulding, Gethin Davis, and Pope off the bench scored the goals to make it a comfortable night. You can see the injuries we picked up there. Walters, Gordon and Chapman all off injured in the first half. And we followed up with a 1-0 win against Newtown. 
few of those players were fit. You can see Walters and Chapman both played in this game. It's nowhere near our strongest squad. And we have been a little bit depleted at times this year. Against Salzburg today, we're missing Kellen Fletcher, Miguel Briones, that's two of the back four, and Danny Gomez-Garcia, who'd had a pretty good start to the season. So Salzburg, possibly a side that contests us. They're second in the group. They look all right. Frank Schmidt, their key player, is a very good one. He's an official wonder kid in the game, but maybe not quite as developed as some of ours are. Attributes-wise, he actually reminds me an awful lot of Mubarak Whelan. Maybe someone we could look to sign in the future. Let's go and scout him as we're playing them. The senior squad, aside from that for them, is pretty decent. Maybe not standout world class. The rest of their players would probably be good squad players for us, but maybe not starters. So still a game at home I'd expect to win. Maybe away from home we'll have a struggle against them. Overall though, decent enough for us. The other sides continue to let us down. Let's start with Barrytown United, who of course finished second and fell into the Europa League. Their games so far have been a 2-0 defeat to PSV. No worries with that. We expected it, despite the red card for the visitors. A home to OHL from Belgium. 3-0 defeat. Played off the park. Lost it in 10 minutes. Got loads of injuries. Now they play Linfield twice in a row. And they have to win them. They have to finish above Linfield in third place and stay in Europe after Christmas. Otherwise, that's a failure. There is no doubt about it from Barrytown United. TNS in third place, we said they had a real opportunity because they fell into the Europa Conference and they should be strong enough for that level. A Tate, a player who we know can make a difference, and he has to an extent. If we have a look at the schedule, they are two from two. They played Academia in the first game. Mitchell and Nash got the goals. They played Barté in the second game. Mitchell and A Tate got the goals. So two wins from two. They come up against Lugano now at home, and if they can win that, they're virtually through with three games to go. So a very good start from TNS there. But can they compete at a bigger level when they get to the knockouts? I don't think so in truth. Colwyn Bay a fourth up and they are, again, disappointments. Not the side that we were a couple of years ago. Saving us with magical nights. Even though they've got a brilliant striker, they flatter to deceive. They drew the game they had to win against Bradablik from Iceland. David Johnson got the goal from the spot, but they weren't good enough. And it's because they didn't improve in the summer. If they had, they'd probably be taking advantage and getting good results here. But a one all draw, followed up by a 2-0 defeat at home to TSC. It was away from home, sorry, but an early red card cost them. And again, aside from Serbia, that they possibly could have got a result against. They now go back-to-back -back against Sheffield United. We know they're going to lose those games. So what we essentially need afterwards is two wins out of two. And to hope that the other teams drop points against each other. Because seven points, is that going to be enough to get through? Probably not. But it will help the coefficient regardless. So I think you can see from looking at the other European sides why I'm so frustrated. Why I'm so disappointed. I can't understand how Welsh football has declined so much in the last couple of years. And I could accept it if it was because of injuries. If it was because they just didn't have star players available at the right times. These are sides who are now struggling domestically, who haven't invested hugely in the summer. We looked at Colwyn May's transfer window. It was pathetic. And we're left in a position now where none of this is a surprise. And perhaps as we came up to the big 20th centenary year and the year we were hoping something massive could happen, perhaps that's the biggest disappointment. So unless there's a big January transfer window, I don't see where the improvement comes. Of course, at the end of this series, we will do a bookmark. We'll look at whether they've improved things off the pitch. We'll look at what they've done to try and improve the clubs and their stature in the Welsh game. TNS and Barry both gone up to two and a half star reputation as a club. Didn't capitalise at all. At the end of this season and series, we will also go and do a five years in the future. I just want to skip ahead and see first how quick our squad is dismantled at Bangor City. But more importantly, I want to see whether Welsh football keeps it up or whether once I've gone from Bangor and they start to sell... The whole league just goes and declines, which I suspect it probably will. But let's go and get into our game today. It is a big one for us. We are playing against Red Bull Salzburg in the first of a double header. If we win this and other results go our way as Rafe play Ajax, we could be in a really good position to try and get through as group winners again. And that would maybe be a sign of progress as a club. The problem is, I know we're probably going to lose Kian Bulkley in winter. And if we lose him in the January window... Maybe it's not a good stage for us. So looking at the group at the moment, Rafe are on zero points, had a disappointing year. Ajax are on one. So if we beat Salzburg and those two hold each other, we could be seven points clear with nine to play for. And I think 
you could say that's a pretty unassailable lead. But let's go and get into it. A big game against the Austrians. We're at home. We've got changes to make after the weekend's game. So we'll go and pick our 11. We'll converse with Acer Hall. And we'll be back in a moment to run through it. So here we are. And as I briefly mentioned earlier, one of the problems we've had this season is depleted squads. We've had more injuries, more fatigue, more players going on international duty than ever before. And it has led to this situation where we've often got a very weak bench. So today, for example, Ruben Bates, who came in last January and barely touched a ball, is now on the bench for a Champions League match as an emergency backup we've bought for the international period only. Otherwise, we'd never have signed him. He's played seven appearances this year, four in the league. He's someone who we didn't want to be playing this regularly, but he is. He's coming from TNS and he's playing more for us than he was for them. It's a bizarre old situation. Tom Jones is back into the squad. Hector lay on the youngster. Trent is starting at left back because of the injury to Fletcher. We know Briones, Gomez, Garcia's out as well. Chapman, the summer signing. Like games galore in the internationals because so many people were out. He's now fatigued. Geffen Davis is knackered. And we're left with a very small squad. So disappointingly, we've got a couple of weak spots in this team. And we've not got the massive ability to change it. The only slight selection dilemma was left back. Tranta comes in. He's played well. He's done okay. And he's what we bought him for. But Nenov obviously is better rated. It's just the fact that he's so short. He's naturally a right sider. I don't think it works for us against a physically imposing team in the Champions League. The rest of the 11's pretty good. Jason Odal obviously comes into the side. That's because Briones is missing and because Danny Gomez Garcia's out. But the 11 today is Samankas between the sticks. Tranter and Simmons, the fullbacks, with Whelan and Jennings at centre half. Whelan dropping into centre half to cover for the injury. Normally, obviously, we would have done Marcus Reddy, but he can't drop in because Gomez Garcia isn't fit. He would have come into centre midfield. So all those little things just add up together. And all those injuries are in the same third of the pitch. But in midfield, we've gone for Odal, Reyes, Reddy and Bulkley, the midfield diamond. Bulkley, not improving. Dropped down to three-star ability now. Maybe a slight concern. But his namesake, he and the top scorer up front. With Kavara, who's had his own injury problems. Not yet a double figures for the season. We need him to find form. And we could do with it being tonight. Gordon on the bench has got goals in him if we need it. Walters is starting to look over the hill in truth. Nathan Roberts maybe saves the date like he did last episode. Because there's not much else going forward there. Let's get into the game against Red Bull Salzburg. Hope we can get an early lead. Because if not, I don't feel we have that many game changers anymore. And here we go. Not too many familiar names in the Salzburg team. But the players we looked at before are involved. Simon Jones over from the English Leagues. He's involved too. As is Paul Long on the bench and Patrick Sheridan. All from the UK and Ireland. Let's go and get into our game note. We're going to ask the lads to prove a point, do what they can to get a victory here. Because although we've won our games in the Champions League this season, and we were the better side against Rafe, who had an off night, we've not really had thumping performances. We've not had big exotic displays. We've relied on efficiency, and even to a large extent in the league, particularly when we've had depleted squads. As early doors Salzburg pick up the ball, Jones with the switch is lost out in the air. But that's why I didn't play Nenov, because those long balls are going diagonal all the time. If they're into the box, we can't be losing all the headers. As Reddy closes down, he's been beaten inside, but Tranter does really well there to get a foot in. Excellent work from the deputy fullback. Got the chance to play it short to Reddy. Support up with him. Kian Bulkley holds it up for Ruben Reyes. Got a man over on the right. Instead plays Bulkley. He gives it to Simmons. Into Kian Bulkley. It's a good save by the keeper. Salzburg defending there. And with three minutes gone, we could have had the lead. A good move, if nothing else. You can see again, it's a point I mentioned in the last couple of episodes. Attendance is starting to wane again. Even in the Champions League, we're not selling out every game now. It's like the fans have got used to it and just sort of dropped off. It's really disappointing. Mubarak Whelan heads over the bar from another set piece. And early doors again, nothing spectacular, nothing flamboyant. But we look good. We look solid. We don't look like conceding. And we have had the better chances to win it. As Greg Pringle, the legend, what I'd do to have him back. Gives Rafe the lead against Ajax. Maybe we could do that, actually. And I know it would break the wage bill for the last half a year. But if we're going to lose Kian Bulkley for 24 million anyway, should we perhaps consider offering a swap deal to Rafe? Let me know what you think of that one down in the comments, because we've got two episodes to make our mind up. Jones gives the ball to Fassold. Shows you how good this game is that I'm talking about transfers in the middle of it. Cavara on the break. Gets it short from Kian Bulkley. Runs down the left-hand side. Got two men closing him down. Into the box he goes. Crosses for Reyes. Shots blocked. It's bobbling all over the place. 
and Salzburg get away with it. Again, dominance, 12 shots, 6 on target. We don't look quite the same. We don't look like we've got that cutting edge. We don't look like we're going to score every time we go forward. It's been a weird old season. As Simmons gets it right side of the box again. Chance to cut back, this two in the middle. Only finds Bravo, the defender. Cleared as far as Mabarak Whelan. Got support down the wing again. Plays into Reyes. Dion Simmons picks it up. Got space to run into. Can he find a better cross? He can. It's Marcus Reddy. Heads over. It's a clear cut chance. And he's missed it. Five minutes to the break. I don't know how we're not ahead. And I say I don't know how. We've dominated the game. But we don't really look like scoring. We don't take our chances. Reyes 25 yards out. Moment of magic perhaps. Into Kian Bulkley. He's missed a sitter. Ultimately, this is what will hold us back. We do not have the killer instinct anymore. Akama puts it in. Odell heads away. Can we counter again? We can't. Simon Jones is there first. Back to the centre defender. Into Bravo. Gives it away to Kavara. Has to take advantage here. He's one on one. Brilliant strike, Bojan Kavara. And after all of the territory, all of the dominance, and all of the flashed balls across the box... Is a moment of magic from Kavara that gives us a half-time lead. His 10th for the season is deserved on the night. But what a weird old game. 1-0 Bangor City. We're playing well. And we're going to tell the lads to keep it up. Because it has been a good performance generally. We've also got exactly what we wanted in the other game in the group. Ajax have equalised at Rafe. If that stays there, we are in a perfect position to win it. And maybe finish on a Champions League quarter-final for the first time. That would be the dream. As Tranta gets it on the left to Reddy. Cuts inside to Odell. Got a man over but plays back to Jennings. And Odell again. He goes short to Ruben Reyes. Through ball to Kavara. Has to score. And does score. I thought there was a chance at offside. But it wasn't given. The goal celebrated. And Bangor City are going to win again. Not really running the show. Or looking phenomenal by any stretch of the imagination. But we just look really efficient. And I think maybe that's the thing that's changed the last couple of years that maybe I found a little bit harder. As Kavara's in again, it's a great challenge. Kian Bulkley nicks it though and hits the post. Comes out, hits the keeper and goes behind for a corner. We'll make changes once we've seen the highlight. But I think the thing that has changed is we've become a lot more solid defensively. Our fullbacks are better defensively and maybe a little less good going forward. Like a Bektas who used to just fly up the wing. Ty McDonald much the same. And maybe that's what I'm finding hard to adapt to, is that we're more professional. We're not just that rampant side who goes away and attacks and draws 3 all or loses 4-3 to City. We're a side that wins 1-0, 2-0, and we have to get used to that. Rafe have conceded against Ajax, fall from grace for them, and unfortunately it doesn't really help us. Let's go and make a couple of substitutions here. I want to take Odal off, who's not had a great game. And I'm going to take Reddy off too. So I think I'm going to put Whelan into the holding role. Lay on at centre half. Because Bates can't play in the Champions League. I'm sorry. I'm going to bring on Nathan Roberts for Reddy. And we'll put Kyle Bulkley into centre midfield to accommodate that. And then Kian Bulkley will be replaced by Lloyd Gordon. Who's in great goal scoring form. Looking at the way we've counter attacked in the second half. He's quick in behind. He's got more pace. But he needs to be in form. 28 shots to two. None on target for Salzburg. You can't argue with our defensive display. It's something we've never really produced in the Champions League till this last season or two. But we've got to do better up front. As Tranter gets the ball into Bulkley, can we be ruthless? Can we make it three or four? Bulkley to Reyes, shots blocked, back to him again. Got two options short, but goes back to Hector Leon, the young substitute. To Jennings, to Leon again. Just playing it around at the back. Eventually, it switch rides to Dion Simmons. He can play down the line. Gordon's in. Gordon scores. He's still got it, hasn't he? 3-0, 11 minutes to go. And maybe, you know, without the pace, losing Kian Bulkley won't be a disaster. He's a very good footballer and he would have been a superstar for this club. But Lloyd Gordon just always seems to score in the big games. Always seems to score in every game, in fairness. Three minutes of stoppage time to be played. It looks like it's petering out. But another professional job, very well done by Bangor City. We've been drawn into a group that I expected to win. And I think we're going to win it as the youngster Roberts picks it up to Tranter. Had a quiet few games, but youth international duty is harming him a little bit physically. As Tranter gets it on the edge to Kyo Bulkley. Plays into Whelan, to Simmons. One more perhaps. Through balls blocked. Trying to be too cute there. Whelan picks it up, goes all the way back to Leon. And with 30 seconds to go, that's not a way to get a fourth. Let's make it a dominant display. Let's make it a big scoreline. Simmons chips it in. Gordon's there. 
Golden does two goals off the bench. Let me know in the comments. Does that go back to being my first choice Champions League partnership? It just looks so much better, particularly at home. And Lloyd Gordon's got pace for whatever else he lacks. 32 shots, 17 on target. Expected goals 3.84. And we do finish with a late flurry to make it 4-0. A fantastic display. Let's go and see what the other score was. But to be honest, I don't think we have to worry about it now. I'm so sure we're going to win this group. We just need a lucky last 16 draw. So Ajax hold on for the 2-1 win away from home at Wraith. That puts them up in second place on four points. Looks like Rafe are dropping out this year. Unless they can produce a miracle in the last three. Ajax and Salzburg fight out for second. I think we're going to top the group. If we get a result at Salzburg, I think it's job done. So hopefully we can wrap that up before the next episode. Let's go and have a look at the schedule to see when we're next going to be back. We did say we'd show the last group stage game away at Rafe. I want to do that because it's been one of the biggest rivalries towards the end of the series. And as a result, I think it would be a fitting way to show our last Champions League group stage game of the series. People have mentioned whether we've got rivalries sort of new on the club screen. We will look at that in the next bookmark. But for me, this has become a little mini personal one against Rafe Rovers. Obviously, they've harmed us from European dreams. We had a real chance to win the Europa League, which they stopped us doing in the semis. They then caused us chaos in the Champions League the next year. And they have been a thorn in our side throughout. And arguably, they've been a bigger story than us in this save. Which, who would have thought that at the start of the Builder Nation? They've won a Europa League. They've basically achieved what we wanted to. And I guess I've maybe got that little bit of jealousy or envy. So that will be the next episode. We might show a game either side, depending on how it's going. But if you did enjoy this episode and you are still enjoying the series into the final season, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments if I'm being a little bit too downcast. I'm finding this a little bit frustrating because I feel the Welsh League starting to go backwards again. But am I being harsh on it? Am I putting my expectations too high? Or am I perhaps right? I think it's looted in its golden generation. And I think the summer transfer window, combined with everyone but TNS's European results, probably show that that is the case. Even us, we're not quite as exciting as we were before and we couldn't find those big transfers for the last summer. So maybe I'm just feeling it's a little bit of an underwhelming finish. I'll be interested to get your thoughts on that. If you want to stay up to date for the rest of the season, the specials at the end of this year, and of course the FM22 plans and announcements just around the corner, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. There'll be daily videos now all the way through to the end of this series, as well as some weekend videos about FM22. There's also a link to the Twitch channel in the eye above, where we'll be streaming every single day once the beta's come out. I'm really looking forward to it. We've got loads of football watch-alongs in the meantime as well. So come and check us out over there. But a massive thank you for watching. Your continued support as always. It is greatly appreciated. I'm not too optimistic that this is going to finish in style this series. I'm hopeful we can still produce something special. I'll see you next time as we get closer to finding out if we can. Yeah.